for this Jinx weekly video. It is patch day, patch 10.2. We're going to jump straight into the video, talking about changes to Jinx, other AD carries that might affect your matchups in lane, and then something of a pseudo AD carry tier list with your help at the end of the video. So, jumping into champion changes in order. Aphelios. The Calibrum basic attack mark damage is now flat. The Calibrum Q cooldown has been increased. The Crescendum mirror chakrams do less damage after the first one. And the Severum onslaught damage ratio has been decreased. It looks like this basically, and they say, follow up with a couple more adjustments based on his performance since launch and how he's stacked up after a couple of bug fixes and changes at the start of the year. So it looks like there's some mixes of nerfs, but maybe also some buffs. I can't quite tell with all the numbers on Aphelios how this works. It's like the math meme or whatever, where it's just a bunch of signs and stuff going all over the place. I can't tell you necessarily how this will change the Aphelios versus Jinx matchup, especially if you're playing Jinx, because I think people are just going to be banning Aphelios still anyways. He's going to be on the bench for probably a little bit while longer. Another interesting change is to Draven. Uh, the R damage ratio now scales. Draven seems to come out of the item changes of the preseason a bit worse for wear. I don't know if anyone's necessarily complaining outside of Draven mains, and in the Jinx Draven matchup, this must mean post 6 is even more of a kill lane on you than he was before. But at the same time, you know, maybe Draven deserves it. I haven't looked at his win rate specifically. He probably needs a little bit of help considering how little he is kind of seen right now. So, the damage bonus attack damage is going up from 1.1 flat to 1.1, 1.3, and 1.5 at the level. So that would be level 6, 11, and 16. And lane, you're going to have to worry about that level 6 one, which is actually the same. So there is that to worry about a little bit less. Jinx is actually the one I'm most excited about because it seems simple, but I think it's actually a pretty decent one if you're playing Jinx. The passive bonus movement speed now applies with epic monsters as well. So the get excited when she gets excited from usually like killing an enemy or like a turret or inhibitor, and so she like takes off with a sprint for the six seconds that decays. That now works on epic monsters. And the reason that I like that, first they mentioned Jinx has always been a big fan of taking objectives, so increasing the list of things or passive procs off is a very champion resonant way to have more Jinx moments each game without massively increasing Jinx's actual power, right? It's not like a full-on damage buff or anything like that. But what I like about it is it does mean in a it feels like for me in a meta where dragon fights are increasingly more important, if I'm gonna be playing Jinx, because maybe she still fits in the comp well, or just as a Jinx main, whatever, I can now have this to play around dragon fights, which can be pretty risky early game, right? If I'm gonna leave lane, leave minions and XP and experience to help with a dragon, and a dragon fight breaks out, I'm totally fine with that, especially if we get the dragon. But now it's like a little bit more insurance that's gonna be, I guess, okay in terms of self peel and stuff like that. Especially if like we win the dragon, we steal it or something, and like, we get the assist, and we can use the movement speed to help engage onto the enemy, because maybe we have other engaged tools on our team as well, maybe pick up a couple of kills, kind of start rotating around the map and snowball a bit faster. There are some Karma changes in case this helps support Karma. The Q and W base damage have been increased, so there is that. If you're playing with a Karma or gets a Karma support, just be aware basically her Q damage is probably with the R as well, and the Root basically, her W, is going to be a little bit more powerful. Lulu, meanwhile, the base armor and attack damage has been rounded up, and the E cooldown has actually been decreased. I guess they want Lulu back, at least in the support role, and again, with a Jinx, not like it's the worst thing to have a Lulu support for you in the late game, or even the mid game, as well as the late game, the Jugger Jinx and stuff like that, right? Nautilus. The Q base damage has been decreased. So if you're going to be seeing him in the bot lane, either on your team when you want to do like the all-in hard engage kind of lanes with the flame chompers, he'll have a little bit less damage on the Q when he goes in. Same if he lands that Q on you with its ridiculous hitbox, which on a side note, they are actually upgrading not this patch, but next patch, Nautilus's visual effects. And they actually said they wanted to try and make a visual effect that's more accurate to Nautilus's Q hitbox. So I am a little bit happy about that. Good job, Riot, but not sarcastically, like actually good job, Riot. Sona, the E-Self movement speed is now flat and increased. So that might actually be a little bit of a buff to not obviously make her back into the meta with like a Taric or something like that, but maybe in the support role with other AD carries like a Jinx and all those other kind of AD carries that might want her Auroras and stuff like that around her. Thresh, meanwhile, is just getting like additional changes from his visual effects, and also like Nautilus, like we mentioned before, they kind of want to make his Q hitbox a bit better too, so there's that. That's actually kind of nice. I really like stuff like that, playing immobile champions against hooks, where it's like, the expectation is that this visual is what's going to hit, and when it doesn't, it just kind of feels a little bit bad, so there we go. There is a Ziggs change I'll briefly mention because Ziggs can always pop up in the bottom lane at random. The Q base damage has been increased, the W enemy knockback increased, and the E slow has been increased so you know if you see him back bot lane it's because he's kind of back in town 
This one affects all eight carries, including Jinx. Cloak of Agility. The initial goal of buffing Cloak of Agility last year was to account for the fact that it was slightly underpowered for the gold cost. However, this has led to folks stacking crits or cloak crits on champions, Jin which also makes the decision between Cloak of Agility and Pickaxe more of a math problem than desired and doesn't help the average player measure how their lane went. A clear item hierarchy is more helpful BF Sword, Pickaxe, Cloak of Agility when considering this key indicator of success. So the crit strike is now going down to 20%. And to kind of quote August Browning, the kit designer for Jinx and several other amazing champions like Jin, Vi, Echo, etc. Uh, should you get the whole crit chance in just Cloak of Agility, and then what's the point then of buying Infinity Edge outside of a couple other things? Obviously, there, his, his words weren't like it's useless buying Infinity Edge, but if you really just want the crit, like a Jin or something, you don't necessarily need to complete the Infinity Edge the same way other champions might have in the past. And so by doing this, it makes a value in also completing Infinity Edge as well as an item slot, because you get that extra 5% crit chance. So that's kind of neat. This might affect data carries as well. Frozen Heart is underperforming compared to other options for armor. We want to be able to, it to be a go-to consideration when a champion is facing many physical threats. The armor is going up from 100 to 110. Welcome back, Malphite. And then Storm Razor. Nerfing Storm Razor as it's overpowered a tad, focusing on the tad so it keeps its unique and impactful slow utility. The attack damage is going down from 55 to 50. And for the visual bug fix, actually, the Storm Razor's energized VFX no longer can be seen within the fog of war. So that's a lot of the changes going into both Jinx and other AD carries. And in terms of matchups and stuff like that, we have certain ones like the Draven that won't be too impactful because at level one, it's actually still the same numbers and same stats. Aphelios will probably still remain on the bench, so I don't actually see that matchup changing too much. That one's so new, it's also still kind of working its way out, I feel. But some of those other ones you might want to watch out for, I really, I'm just saying like Ziggs is a dark horse. I'm not saying put a lot of stack or a lot of stock into the Ziggs becoming a bot lane champion again. I'm just saying if he does, you want to be aware that's also because he's basically all powerful or more powerful in all of his abilities now, except his ultimate, which is already a powerful ability in itself. We didn't see some changes to some other AD carriers, of course, like Jin and stuff like that too, which if we jump over to go to the pseudo AD carry tier list at a site like say, champion.gg, op.gg, the same business as usual. We do see Senna and Misfortune still at the top. We talked about them in the last episode, in which case they, Misfortune specifically is like a spell-based AD carry, but she's doing really good because the early game, I feel, is something that's very important. She can lane bully and she can fight early with dragons at level six. Senna, meanwhile, can flex back and forth with force cracks included, uh, she's a DPS AD carry, but she can also, with her heals and stuff, be pretty useful, both in the early game and as the game goes on, the global ultimate is pretty useful, and she's a powerful, but not, I wouldn't say overpowered AD carry. We do have auto attackers again, still like Twitch, like Jin, like Vagar even if you want to go the mage route, but Jinx is still up in the conversation, and I think with the buff, it will be really good fighting around dragons and stuff like that. I don't know if that's going to necessarily, like, move up her win rate, but to clarify, it wasn't supposed to move up her win rate. The idea, it's kind of like a quality of life. If you remember briefly when they mentioned doing quality of life buffs to certain champions and Jinx was on the list, this is it, right? They don't want to necessarily buff her as in like give her more power, give her more like, you know, ability damage on the flame chompers even and open up like the AP route or something like that. They just want to be like, hey, if you're going to be doing these things that feel fundamental to playing the game now, like taking dragons and fighting for them and stuff like that, that every AD carry probably needs to have like an ability to feel safe doing it if they play their cards right. Obviously, if you're gonna flash over the wall as Jinx into the all five enemy champions trying to do the dragon, that passive instant, that change is not gonna do anything for you. Even if you take the dragon, you're probably dead, right? It's one of those kind of changes, so just keep that in mind. I will, of course, have bias and say I'm gonna like it though, but it's probably not gonna make her like the number one AD carry, which I think is why it's such a good change. It doesn't really make her broken or suddenly or anything like that. Other AD carries that we thought might have seen some changes but didn't would be like Kaisa and Zaya too. I, I'm surprised they've been allowed to be weak for more than one patch. I'm not really being sarcastic, but I am kind of being sarcastic. The Draven change will be interesting because I think part of the thing is he's a lane bully, but if he doesn't really get off in lane, he's kind of, uh, some people feel like he kind of falls behind and never can recover and maybe the increase in like his, you know, ultimate ratio. So he can fight across the map and stuff like that. Or even when he's 1v1ing somebody at level 11 and beyond, which is the later game, right? Where he probably fell off if he didn't get a lead, maybe has a little bit of help and maybe he can come up a little bit. I don't think when he's down to 47% win rate that's going to necessarily change, but like maybe it's a step in the right direction. It's like baby steps because they don't want to make Draven back in the meta where everybody played him and just rushed death stance and just did their, you know, dance. We do see other AD carries up in the conversation. Like Caitlyn's still around and above 50, Ash, Vayne, other auto attackers. So I'm going to say 
And this is my opinion when where I need your help. So in the comments down below, comment with your best AD carries because of your ELO, because what you think should be banned, which should you pick, especially if you can't pick Jinx, stuff like that. I'm gonna still stay on the train that the auto tech or AD carries are still the best AD carries outside of Misfortune to play on this patch. The more skilled shot, like Varus and stuff like that, even Lucian, who's kind of like an in-between, maybe even Draven, who is an auto-attacker, but you need those axes, and of course Ezreal and stuff like that, they're still going to be at the bottom of the tier list. With like the mid-tier list, the Dark Horses being mages, but only things like Heimerdinger, Vegar, and Cassiopeia. Although all the other ones are a bit too weak, they can be in the bottom lane, but they're a bit too weak. And of course, the secret Dark Horse being, of course, Ziggs. So that's going to be all for this video because I just realized this video is way too long as it is. So thank you so much for watching this video. Again, in the comment section, comment with your own AD carry tier list and per elo. That way we can kind of like help each other out. See like, hey, if you're in diamond, this is why you're climbing because you're banning this instead of this. And then you can help someone in silver or someone in gold. You can help someone in bronze. And we can kind of help each other out as fellow Jinx players. So I don't know which video will be next because life can have a lot of kinks. So until this time, take care. GG, get jinxed. Thank you for watching and enjoy pizza responsibly.